Hi, I'm Robert, and welcome to today's episode of What the Heck is Robert Making a Video About Now? This is my new Serenolini custom-built accordion that was made especially for me at the Serenolini factory near Castelfidardo, Italy. I bought it through St. Louis Accordions in St. Louis, Missouri, USA. I'm very happy to have done business with both of those organizations and uh, the accordion is beautiful. Um, today's video is about how I'm going to change one of the bass registrations in the accordion. So the, uh, the registration that you just heard in that recording is the one selected by this switch and the recording was a bit of a uh, swan song for that registration because it's probably the last time that that registration will be played in this accordion. I'm going to change that registration to something else that I think is better suited to what I want to do with the instrument. Um, so even though it sounds good, I think it'll be better with the, uh, with the new setup. So in the next part of the video, you'll see uh, the accordion get taken apart. You'll see the parts that are needed to make the difference in the bass registrations, and I'll try to explain how that works. And then at the end, hopefully you'll get to hear the new bass registration demonstrated. So uh, thank you for watching, and I'll be right back without this thing strapped to my chest. So here it is on the bench, which isn't really a bench, it's really a piano with a moving blanket on it. And this is where we're going to be taking the bass section off of the bellows. And we'll do that by removing several screws, one of which is right here, and another one here. And it has, these two have counterparts around the perimeter of the bass section where it joins the bellows. I'm going to do that and um, and then we'll see what's inside and how the base registration switches work. Okay, here we are ready to take the uh, base section off of the bellows. One of the nice customizations that St. Louis Accordions requests by default from the Serenolini factory is these screws. Um, very often the bellows are attached to each part of the instrument with um, with push pins that are an interference fit into the wood of the bellows frame. And that works great, but screws are kind of more sustainable in that they can go in and out many, many times without um, wearing out the hole or enlarging the hole um, and letting the fit become looser and looser over time as things are done to the accordion. Of course, it's a little slower to get screws out than it is to get uh, pins out, but I think this is a good trade-off. I would not have known to request the screws if it weren't for the help of St. Louis accordions, so that's a really nice touch on their part. Okay, last one coming out now. Okay, and we're ready to disassemble. Okay, now the accordion is in two big pieces. I'm just going to set set this treble part aside. We won't be doing anything to that. And here's the inside. You can see on the base side the uh, the inside has these reed blocks. This is a special uh, type of reed block construction that not every accordion uses, this is an L-shaped reed block referring to this shape here. Very often you'll see that the bass and the tenor reeds 
are all oriented in the same way, which is kind of sticking out like these and these and these uh, tenor reeds. But in this accordion, the bass reed uh, rank actually folds over the back of the other reed blocks, and uh, it gives it a nice, uh, rich and mellow sound, which I like very much. All right, and here is the mechanism of registration sliders that we're going to be working with today. And when I push any of these buttons, you can see things move there. And the idea is that each one of the switches is connected to a shaft that turns two little selector Paul's. You can see when I press this switch, one of them goes to the left and the other one goes to the right. So if there's a tab on any of the sliders for the one going to the left, that slider will get pushed to the left. And similarly, if there's a tab on a slider by the one going to the right, that slider will get pushed to the right when I push this switch. And one direction closes the bank of reeds that corresponds to a slider, and the other direction opens the bank of reeds that corresponds to a slider. So there are five sets of reeds, one slider for each set of reeds. And the configuration of the tabs on these sliders is what determines the effect of each one of these switches. And the switch that I'm going to be changing today is the one that's right here. So what I'm going to do is install two different new sliders, one for the bass reeds and one for the tenor reeds, um, in place of the existing bass and tenor sliders. And those sliders will have tabs in different places from the ones that are now handling the bass and tenor reed duties um, in the accordion as it's assembled. Everything else about these sliders is the same. I won't be changing the sliders for the contralto, the alto, or the soprano reeds. So only the bass and tenor are going to change. So uh, in our, our next step in disassembling is you can see these little copper colored clips here. And there are several of them. These are the clips that hold in the stack of slides, these selector slides. I need to remove these clips and I'll lift out the little bearing surfaces that are held underneath against which the slides actually slide back and forth. And then I'll be able to remove the two slides that I want to change. And luckily for me, the two slides I want to change are the topmost two in the stack. So I don't have to remove any in the, that are in the way that I'm not changing. I'll just leave those in place. And um, I also have to undo the eclipse on these little pivot points at the end because with each one of these slides there's a little arm that goes out to the lever that opens and closes the uh, the orifices for the reeds and so I have to detach the, the arm from the point where it is clipped to this little pivot and that's kind of the most dangerous part of the operation because anybody who has worked with these little eclipse nose they love to uh, they they come off under tension and they love to go flying around whatever place you're in so uh, i'll be lucky if at the end i still have these guys um, hopefully i can keep them confined when they try to come exploding out of the instrument so uh, i'm going to switch my shot angles now and next step will be to get this assembly apart so that we can change those two slides okay here we are about to uh, start disassembling things inside the base side of the accordion and you can see these copper clips need to slide off kind of in the direction of the main body of this base side and so to make sure I have plenty of room to work while I'm getting those off I'm going to remove this one reed block for the soprano reeds um, so that's a pretty easy operation this one screw holding this end of it underneath the um, this little metal bridge there's a nut that just fell and that's normal 
Um, I'll get that out. And that re retainer nut will go back in there when we're done. And out comes the screw. You can see the reed block is loose. There's a washer that goes underneath the uh, this little retainer for the reed block. I'll just make sure I put all those things together and don't lose anything. And now, just being very careful, I'll remove this reed block. So, look at these beautifully made reeds. These um, this accordion has Artigiana B Turbo reeds in it. Um, those are very high quality handmade reed. Um, okay, so now you can see I have plenty of room to work here and I can start to slide these copper clips off. You can see this is a uh, complex shaped uh, pointy tool that I use to grab things that need to be grabbed with pointy things. So um, I'm sure it has an official name. I don't know what the official name is. So now I can just insert the tip in this hole in the copper thing and also I'm going to give a little bit of a push downward on the clip itself where it's spring-loaded against the uh, little boss that holds it. It's moving slowly. I prefer to be patient with these things because I don't have a ton of experience so I don't really know what's about to happen all the time. And now I've got that copper clip free. I just have to do that one, two, three, four more times. Um, underneath the copper clip you can see there's this metal little bearing surface slider that comes off right here. Pulling that off as well. I'm just going to keep that with its clip and even though these all look identical I'm going to make sure that everything goes back in exactly the same place because I don't want to invite any trouble because of things not matching up exactly right. So I'm going to have an organized little pile of parts back there That time I did not have to relieve any of the stress um, on the springiness of the clip. They aren't actually that strong. Okay, now that was a bit of a mistake. No big deal, but the uh, tip of my tool went to a place that it shouldn't have. No damage in an important spot, but um, generally, if you aspire to be serious about these things, you should avoid that kind of error. And to prevent a similar error, this is actually more difficult because of the camera angle and, uh, you know, my trying to show you as I go. Um, if I were not trying to make the video, I would have this flat on the work surface. Okay. And last one. This top slider in the stack is essentially free now except for the coupling at the end. So the next step is to get that, that coupling undone. This is always a little bit sketchy, but I find that it's useful to start by pressing the ends of the E-clip with a flat blade. Now it's as far as it'll go that way, and I can get the pointy tool in. And I keep my finger against the clip to avoid having it go flying. Of course, it went flying anyway, but there it is. So no, uh, no lost clip on that slider. All right, and here, coming out right now, is the slide for the tenor reeds. And down here in the position for the second switch is where we're going to change to a different slider that has tabs reversed. So it'll have an on tab here where there's no tab currently, and it'll have no tab here on the off side where there is currently a tab. 
Next, I have to do the same freeing of the E clip for the base slider. Oops, and I've made it come apart by accident. Beginner bonehead move, but what this tells me is that I'm just going to take out these little plastic bearing surface things as well now because they've started coming out on their own anyway. And those get organized in order with the clips that held the stack in. So each one of these plastic things going between the two slides, uh, between each layer of slides, is uh, held on those same bosses where the clips go. And now I have all those out from the base slide and I can orient things in such a way that I have access now to the E-clip. There it is. That one was really easy to get off. I don't think it should have been that easy, so when I put it back together I'm going to be investigating whether uh, everything is really okay with that pivot joint. But for now, what I have is the ability to get this slide out as well. All right, and there it is. And here again, you can see that in the position where the second switch has an on tab on the tenor slide, or sorry, an off tab on the tenor slide, and an on tab on the base slide, I'm going to be replacing with a base slide that has no on tab and an off tab, where the tenor one has an off tab now, and the tenor one will have an on tab. Okay, here we are with the new slides. This is the old base slide and the new base slide, and you can see that the, uh, the only difference between them is the presence of this tab on the old slide is replaced by the absence of a tab down here, and the absence of a tab up here is replaced by the presence of a tab up here. Other than that, all the tabs are in the same places, so that's going to just change what that one switch does for the base reads. Similarly for tenor, we have an on tab for the new slide where there was an off tab for the old slide. So now I'm just going to move these arms to the new slides and we'll put everything back together. Okay, so moving these arms, first I want to begin with each one by noting kind of how many threads are left outside the arm on the assumption that the new slides have their rivets and pivots in exactly the same place, that it at least will be a good starting point, I think. Um, I can already see that there are some cosmetic differences here, um, and that's okay, but it looks like everything kind of lines up. So it looks like there's about four to five threads outside the brass here, and I'm just going to unscrew and screw into the new one, and that looks about right. And now we'll do the same thing on the base side. This one has three to four threads outside the brass, something like that. And now it's reassembly time. Bass goes in first, tenor goes in next, and we clip things together and it should all be good. Okay, I'm gonna tilt this so you can see. Sorry about the running water sounds in the background. I guess we're lucky to have running water. I'm just going to ease this onto its pin. There we go. And now I have to put in those rubber or uh, plastic slip cushions. Again, one on each boss, and I'm taking maybe more care than necessary by making sure each one goes back exactly where it came from. Okay. Alright, so now the base slider is in, and in goes the tenor slider. 
I don't know whether to call these slides or sliders. I've heard them referred to in different ways, and uh, that's just how it is. So I use both terms to try to make sure I'm not mistaken more than half the time. Now I'm just putting the top bearing plates and the clips back in, and I think I can do this entirely by hand, which is nice because I'm not applying force with a sharp or uh, potentially destructive tool. Um, I'm just going to do the ends first so it's held securely in place. And then I'm going to, well, actually, before I do, before I clip that end in, in case I need that freedom, I'm going to put this pin. Yeah, it's huh. This one is being a little reluctant, so I'm just going to apply some carefully directed force. There we go. A little wiggling did it. Anytime you have to apply more than the appropriate amount of force, you have a problem. And in fact, a lot of mechanical intuition seems to me to be just an understanding of how much force is right in a particular situation. All right, I can't do this with the uh, with everything tilted for the camera angle very easily, but and I'm trying not to get any of my skin oils on the reeds that are still in place. Um, it might have been maximally safe to just remove all the reed blocks from the accordion, but I did not do that. Okay. Now those two end clips are in place. I don't have the middle secured, but we can at least test that this works, being careful, you know, remembering that we don't have the clips on the ends of these uh, rods, but it does look like everything is going to work, and I get a good indication that those um, orifices are opening and closing correctly and, you know, basically all the way, that the holes are fully covered when they're supposed to be and fully uncovered when they're supposed to be. To truly check that visually, I would have to pull the tenor and base reed block off. And, uh, and maybe we will actually have a look at that before we put everything back together, just to make sure, because pulling that reed block out is pretty easy to do. Now I have three clips in. This should be the last clip, and then this mechanism will be all back together, except for those two E-clips that go on the pins, and we'll make sure not to forget those. I'm going to set my old slides aside, and I'm going to pull out the uh, tenor and base reed block now, and this will let us see that those orifices open and close exactly the way that they're supposed to and that no further screw adjustment is needed in those arms. So again the camera angle doesn't give me the best working angle here so you'll have a little bit of trouble seeing as that nut falls out but there it is and now I can get this screw out with its washer loosely with it and now the base and tenor reed block comes out like this. Okay, I took the big reed block off, and uh, you can kind of see it over here in the edge of the frame, um, sitting out of the way. And I can see now that when I switch the registrations, um, the base and the tenor orifices open and close correctly, so there's no kind of metal of those um, orifice slides hanging over the edges of the um, the openings here. So there's the uh, base closed and there's the base open and there's base and tenor both closed and there's the tenor open. So 
Um, so that looks really good. Everything is nicely centered. And so that tells me that I have these screw arms in the correct, um, you know, degree of extension. And it's time to put the clips on the pivot points now. So I'm just going to get those clips and try to put them on. This could be the adventure part of our little journey that we're taking together here. I think that I am going to have to angle this flat so I can work with it in the usual way. I apologize that you can't see what's going on. Maybe we'll fast forward through this part of the video or something. I just need to make sure that the little middle bit of the E is going into the slot, which I think is what wasn't correct about the way this was installed before. And to be fair, it wasn't the factory that made that mistake, it was me. I had this apart earlier to understand how the mechanism works and what I wanted to change, um, or what, what parts needed to be changed to get it to do what I wanted. So, I'm the one who put that clip in wrong. There we go. Tweezers to the rescue. Okay, so the base one should be working fine now. Good. We're ready for what I hope will be the easier one, the clip on the tenor. Now trying again to put the uh, clip on the tenor arm, having squished it shut a bit so that it should fit snugly now. Yeah, nice. Check the operation. All right, time to put the reed blocks back in. Just check and make sure I don't have any extra parts. I'll put the soprano reed block in first, even though it came out first. Um, I have more room to work on that without the uh, base and tenor reed block in there. These things feel so good when they go in very, very positively located by the way this wood and metal is all very accurately set up. And uh, this is a little bit of a sketchy part of the operation to put this nut in the correct spot. Oops, I've got to put the washer in the right place. Washer goes between the retainer on the reed block and the uh, metal bridge. This is something I can actually use this tool to line everything up, hold it in place while I put the screw in. The screw has some intentionally flattened threads so that it doesn't come out by accident even when the nut is not on. We'll have to meet it. Yep, I can feel the bolt coming through the nut now. I just need to make sure that the nut is oriented correctly across the bridge. It is. And now it's just a question of getting the screw tight and the bridge is going to hold the nut in the right place now. All right, that's beautiful. Nice and firm. And now the base and tenor reed block goes in as well in the same way. So washer in between, pointy thing to line everything up, bolt goes in a little bit, nut goes under the bridge. I know you can't really see much because everything I'm doing is in the way of the camera. All right, and that's nice and snug. Reed block is held in super well. So now it's time to put the instrument back together, play it, and see what we got. So I'm going to sign off the repair part. You'll, see, you'll next see the instrument all reassembled, and we'll have a little demo if everything has gone well. Okay, and here's a demo of the new registration that we established by changing those 
bass registration slides in the uh, in the accordion. Um, when you listen to this, remember that uh, although I'm playing solo right here and right now, the main thing I envision doing with this registration is playing in a group that would typically have a bass player, guitar, and um, and maybe other instruments as well. So the purpose of this registration is to be kind of um, light on the bass and to be able to play nice um, accompaniment chords in the mid-range of the instrument. So in the beginning of this video you heard the old registration that I replaced which had the uh, the bass reed in it. This registration does not. It has the tenor reed in place of the bass reed in that registration. This registration consists of the middle three um, ranks of reeds on the bass side of the instrument. So it's very thick in the middle of the tone um, and it almost, you know, it overlaps quite a bit with the um, bassoon chord voicings that you would use to play jazz accompaniments on the right side of the instrument. So, you know, you can hear and, you know, that's pretty similar. So they're really meant to blend and complement each other. Um, and the challenge in playing with the registration is that I have to avoid um, making it too thick and too muddy and getting my left hand and my right hand in the way of each other. So, um, so it is different, but it sounds wonderful to my ear when I imagine how I want to use it and I'm really looking forward to using this registration in a group. So here's just a very quick demo of, uh, of, of the registration and how it might, it might sound. Um, well, how it does sound, but you can imagine how it might sound with other instruments too. <laughs> Thank you.